Father John, this next topic is very difficult. Um, we are exceptionally talented uh, human beings uh, at hurting one another, doing damage to one another. And we're also very talented at uh, not letting go of those hurts that we experience. So can you tell us a little bit about how can we learn to, to forgive others better when they wound us? Yeah. Well, forgiveness is a difficult topic, as you said, Dan, but it's also central. It's central to the gospel. Our Lord said, told, taught, taught us to pray by saying, you know, Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Because forgiveness is kind of the face of love in a fallen world. We have to learn to forgive. But we can't do it on our own strength. It has, it's a supernatural thing to be merciful. Yeah. And God's grace is at work in our lives to help us do that. But there are certain things that can help us forgive. And I think one of the most effective uh, helps in the realm of forgiveness is to understand the distinction between an emotion and a decision. Someone hurts me. Someone does something unjust or evil to me. I'm going to feel that. I mean, unless I'm a stone, <laughs> I'm going to feel that. I'm going to feel resentment. I'm going to feel anger. I'm going to feel pain. That's emotion. That's feeling. And that's real. Uh, now, when I forgive that person, when I say in my heart, I forgive you, when I say to God, God bless that person, keep them, lead them to heaven, they hurt me, but I forgive them. When I make that decision to let go, do the emotions go away? Do I stop feeling the resentment and the anger? Not always, not right away. Um, so there's a difference between the decision to forgive and the feelings that come from having been hurt by someone. They're not the same thing. We can forgive even when the emotions are left over. Now. There's something we can do to help our emotions catch, catch up with our decision, mm -hmm. and that's pray for the person who's offended us. The more we pray for them, God bless them and keep them, the more we'll train our emotions to be in tune with our faith. Father, you mentioned at the beginning that Jesus included this, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. You know, he really dug in on this issue and even told a story to further illustrate how grave it is to not forgive where he talked about the one individual who owed his master a huge amount of money and, uh, and ran into a difficult situation. The master forgave that person uh, their huge debt. But then that same person went out and somebody owed them a much smaller debt in proportion and they would not forgive. They would not show mercy. Christ gave us that story to illustrate an incredibly perilous position to be in. When we don't, when we don't choose to engage with some of these principles you're talking about to work through yeah. the forgiveness issue. Yeah, the problem, the reason Jesus emphasized forgiveness so much is because if we, dis, if we choose not to forgive someone, what are we actually doing? We're actually putting ourselves in God's place. Above God, really. Up, above God, right. right. And when we do that, we're, we're cutting ourselves off from God's grace. If we're saying, well, I'm God, then I'm saying, I don't need you, God. And if I say that, well, God's going to respect my decision. He's not going to force himself into my life. And that's why Jesus emphasized so much we have in him, with his grace, we have to forgive our enemies, forgive those who've offended us. Well, and the key here really is understanding, I, I think the key to motivating ourselves to forgiveness is understanding the great debt that we owe and, and, and the amazing forgiveness of God. I mean, before the beginning of time, he created each and every one of us. And he knew, he wanted a relationship with us, and he knew he could foresee that we would participate in the nails being driven through his hands. We would participate in him being scourged at the pillar or the crown of thorns, but yet he still loved us enough to bring us into existence and attempt to, to draw us into that love relationship. How do we cultivate that, uh, that idea that will strengthen our will Against, the, against being apathetic about pursuing forgiveness. Yeah, that's, it's very important for us to pray. Yeah. And in prayer, we discover the depth of Christ's love for us. We also discover the Holy Spirit reveals to us little by little the evil of our sin, how horrible our sins really are, how much they offend God, how much they disturb the order that God meant to be in the universe in our lives. If we don't pray, we won't experience those two things, the evil of sin, and the immensity of God's forgiveness. Absolutely. If we don't experience those two things, we will not be able to forgive others. I agree, and I think a, a real good uh, approach to prayer in particular that helps us understand our own participation in His forgiveness are the way of the cross, the, de the devotion. Um, 
and the two, there are two saints that particularly were very powerful in the way that they um, wrote about how we are part of his suffering are St. Alphonsus of Liguria and St. Francis of Assisi. And you can buy booklets that they specifically designed or wrote uh, that uh, can help you to dig into that reality. Yeah, yeah. there's a reason that the church requires every, uh, every place where we celebrate Mass, it's required to have a crucifix yeah. there over the altar yeah. to remind us of our Lord's passion. Yeah. And that's really the central mystery of our faith. To dig deeper in the spiritual life, to explore a little more about the better part, go to rcspiritualdirection.com. That's R as in Roman, C as in Catholic, spiritualdirection.com.